Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the name of Jesus. How many are you glad you're back in class with Pastor Robert on a Sunday morning? Amen. We're going to be talking about discover receiving your inheritance, our third in a row, our session in Jesus' name. Receiving your inheritance is really important. To, when you start putting all the, the information together and start applying it, you're going to find out there's things that are changing in your life you didn't even realize. Amen. The best part about this is, is you haven't been taught this once before. This has been going on in your life, but you didn't put two and two together. So I hope that you hear and go, oh, wow, I could be doing that. So let's pray. Let's thank the Holy Spirit for being our teacher today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the revelation knowledge that you're giving to us, the illumination, and the comparison in the Word of God. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. How many of us have found ourselves in this type of a situation? You're in debt. You have a mortgage payment, car payments, utility payments, loan payments, furniture payments, house repair payments, car repair payments, IRS payments, and so on and so forth. How many know you've ever been in that boat? Anybody here? This type of situation can put you into a terrible fix. So no wonder your self-esteem is so low. It's because you're broke. You're broke. So God wants you out of debt. So how does he do this? It's in his word. Say, thank you, Lord. When we have a need, our faith will bring it to pass. I'm going to say that one more time because that's the whole crux of this teaching. When we have a need, our faith will bring it to pass. We are the ones that release it into this earth realm in Jesus name amen. amen so the Bible says that if you walk in truth you will get free amen how many know that yeah. well two of you know that the rest yeah. of you are still wondering what I'm talking about the truth that you know sets you free amen. amen all right so the truth makes you free when you see the truth of the kingdom amen the kingdom is going to set you free now, how about you know that Adam was told he would eat of his hard labor? We see that in Genesis 3, 17 through 19. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. How many like God to talk to you like that? That is not nice. What a, what a prophecy over your life. You're going to eat nothing but hard labor. Nothing's going to work for you. This is pretty hard, right? So how many know that provision is necessary in life for everything? You've got to have something. To, you've got to have provision. You have money? Everybody says, I've got to have some, right? It's a necessary thing that we want, okay? As you can see, your vision is not coming to pass until you have provision. How I many you know what God's called you to do and you're not doing it because you don't have any money? Because you're playing broke. Okay, I'm talking to all of you because it must be real quiet in here. All right, and those of you who are watching, all right. Adam lost his provision and his vision in the garden. He became a survivalist. None of you are a survivalist, right? Yeah, right. Tell you how many are going to go to work tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you. Why don't you just stay home? 
And then you go, well, how will I survive? Oh, you're survivalist. I get it. Running after things for your provision. Okay? How many know that Adam's mindset was to look for food? Take care of number one, me. I have to have provision. Now I'm out of the garden. Now how am I going to get food to eat? Where do I go to get provision? And a, lot of, a lot of you guys say, well, I went to school and I didn't do very good and my math wasn't any good. I don't know how to spell. So what kind of job can I get? And you start finding out you're eating hard labor. You kind of wonder, okay, how's this going to work? This revelation I'm about to teach you today is going to teach you how to operate in the kingdom of God. How many want to learn how to operate in the kingdom of God? Amen? The last two sessions I have set a foundation for you. Now we want to learn the key. Amen? The key is this. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he add no sorrow with it. The blessing of of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. What is the blessing? It's the covenant of God. When you understand God's covenant, you'll understand the blessing of the Lord. When you understand that, things are going to turn. When you understand the key that unlocks your survivalist mentality, and you start walking by faith, and start calling those things that be not as though they are, you will start receiving. Say amen. amen. So what we want, and what I'm trying to teach, is an impact and a manifestation in your life. Say thank you, Jesus. We want the reality of the kingdom of God in our lives, don't we? Praise the Lord. Potiphar, we talked about that in the first session, saw the blessing of the Lord in Joseph's life, and... Had Joseph take care of his stuff, which was blessed. Amen. Why did Potiphar's stuff get blessed? Because it changed kingdoms. Joseph had a covenant. And Potiphar, by mistake, not realizing, if I have Joseph watch my stuff, the blessing of the Lord would come on me. And it did. And everything he had was blessed because of Joseph's sake. Amen. And it changed kingdoms from out of Potiphar's hands into the Lord's hands through Joseph because of the covenant. How many know that you have a covenant? Amen. So if Potiphar can do it accidentally, come on, listen up. If Potiphar can do this accidentally, right, we should be able to do it under the new covenant of God. Right on. How many want to do that? If he can do it accidentally, and just by accident, we should be able to do it under the new covenant of God. So the key is this. We're here, and we have the keys to the kingdom of God. We have the keys, right? Okay, do it. Do what? Get out of debt. Go pay off your house tomorrow. You guys aren't jumping for joy. You're going like, well, yeah, right, uh-huh, because you don't believe it, okay? But you might say, I don't know how to do it, Pastor Robert. I don't know how to do it. Well, how did Jesus do it? And this is getting adamant, Robert. How did Jesus do it? He showed us in the Bible. He was the teacher. Amen. He came in, and he had things, and he did it. We see in the Old Testament where the prophets did mighty works, right? How did they do it? we got to start figuring it out. This Bible that you're reading is written so we can see how Jesus did it. Amen. Amen. All right. Jesus is teaching us. He told Peter to go catch a fish so Peter can learn to listen to the Spirit of God. Hmm. The Holy Spirit is now our teacher. Amen. So how many times will the Word of God work? Every, time. Every single time. Okay? Once you learn the laws of the kingdom, they will work every single time. Every time. Say always. always. All right. 
Now, if you can get one light bulb to work, then you can make millions of them work. Okay? How many know that's easy? So once you figure it out, see, most of us still haven't figured this out yet. Where our minds have been renewed to turning on a light, a light bulb. But there was a time when there was no light bulbs. There was a time all you had was candles. And the only way you could do something was to light a candle, and it didn't bring you much light. But we have light bulbs, and now you go around, you can see light bulbs everywhere. Especially if you're flying at night, and you look down, and you see all the lights all over the, the earth. Light bulbs are there. If you can make one of them, you can do it. All right? And everybody knows that gravity works. Everybody knows that airplanes can defy gravity because they fly. Mm -hmm. But they're operating in a law that's already set. Yeah. It's a done deal. Amen? Yeah. So the law of electricity is already set. Once you understand how the laws function, you can work them, right? Yeah. So in Mark chapter 6, <clears throat> Jesus feeds 5,000 men. All right? Some of us are in lack today. So what we do is we go to the Word of God and ask, how did Jesus handle the situation of no food? Jesus operated from a new kingdom, and we will too. Once you understand, Jesus did it, what about me? I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. So if Jesus is telling us that, then that's the truth. Amen? So let's go to Mark chapter 6 and in verse 35. Mark chapter 6 and thir verse 35. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give you them to eat. You do it. Oops. This is where the people of God have not getting it. He said, You do it. A remote place. Send the people away so they can get something to eat. And Jesus said, You give them something to eat. What do you think the disciples thought? That's impossible. You pay off your house tomorrow. That's impossible. You get a car, start driving. That's impossible. You're looking at the impossibilities rather than the kingdom of God. Okay? Miracles are not miracles in the kingdom of God. It's the norm. Okay? This is how it always works. It always does. Okay? The supernatural is natural in the kingdom of God. We think it's a miracle because the light turned on. We think it's a miracle because that thing can fly through the sky. It's just the way it is. See, some of you have been renewed. You're born into this. Airplanes are flying. Lights are turned on. Cars go fast. Jets fly through the air. And you just assume that's how life is. And your mind is renewed to those things. So you don't worry about it. Okay? In times past, if someone saw a light bulb light up, they would have called that a miracle. They just did not understand the laws of electricity. And the laws are already set in the kingdom of God. Are you getting this? Praise the Lord. Okay? So if someone does not receive what is theirs... We're not to look at God and blame him for it. Hmm. Instead, we're to look at the situation and find out why it's not working or what is the short-circuiting that situation. What is causing the anointing not to flow? Where is the short circuit of faith at? Where is this problem at? Jesus taught the people, and their faith grew and responded correctly. We go around laying hands on people, and their faith is not there. Then they blame God because nothing happened. Jesus identified faith. Jesus taught the people so their faith would grow. The blind man. What did Jesus do? He located the blind man's faith. 
He had faith to be healed, and he was healed immediately. Your faith has made you whole. Greater works shall you do. In John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Now he's saying, verily, verily, in the King James. He is telling you, this is a law that's set. Get with the program. Jesus is telling us. I say to you, he that believeth on me. How many believers we got? Everyone here believes on Jesus? Amen. The works I do, shall he do also. Whatever I'm doing. So if I can feed 5,000, so can you. And greater. If I can walk on water, so can you. If I can raise Lazarus, so can you. Greater works shall you do. Because I go to my Father. So how does this work? We need the truth, the revelation, and the knowledge. We need to get free from the old things we know about this earth curse system, and we need to learn the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So how many want some revelation knowledge? How many are starting to realize why it's so important, and I'm Pastor Robert, so adamant that you get yourself prepared and get on board so you are working like a good oiled machine. You're not hiccuping anywhere along the line in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus came from off the mountaintop and found out that the disciples could not cast out the demon. All right, in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 through 18. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted Jesus. And, they, and he asked the scribes, what are you questioning with my disciples? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. So everybody look at me and say, not all demons come out. Oh, they do? Well, how come it didn't happen? What? So there are a lot of pastors I've talked to and said, well, not all demons come out. You've got a screwed up doctrine and get it from the horse's mouth. That's wrong. All demons are supposed to come out. All right? So Jesus answereth him and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Now, other uh, uh, Bible uh, verses say, O oh, perverse generation. That's perverted. All demons are to come out. So there's something that you're not doing like I told you to do. Oh, okay. And they brought him to him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long ago since this came into him? And he said, of a child. And oft times says, cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. But, you know, the guy's showing he's really not with it. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and it came out of him, and he was one as dead, insomuch that many said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Jesus cast out the demon, then said, Oh, perverted generation. And some churches make doctrines of things when something does not work. They say all demons can't, don't come out. Instead of examining the facts that Jesus gave a, the disciples authority to cast out demons, just a few chapters further before this, if something doesn't not happen, we should be inquisitive and ask, why didn't that work? So if you're laying hands on somebody and they're not well, you need to find out why didn't they get well. If you're casting out a devil and it doesn't come out, you need to find out why didn't that happen. 
we ought to be asking the Holy Spirit, give me an illumination on that, please. What is hindering that person from receiving? Why isn't the anointing flowing? When Jesus says it's supposed to work, then it is to work. When that happens to you, find out why. Find out why. Don't go around blaming God. Well, I guess it wasn't God's will. Excuse me, the lights turn on. I guess it wasn't PGE's will that the electricity come. No, the light bulbs burn out. Well, replace it and it'll work. Turn on the electricity. Pay your bill. Get everything in alignment and it will work. Get all the things that you need to know in alignment and it will work. We are in the new kingdom. We are learning how it works. Amen. So go ahead and ask the Holy Spirit and find out why. Why, Lord? What happened? And he'll speak to you and give you the answer. And it's most likely something simple. Now, to feed 5,000 hungry men, how many of us would say that our situation is worse than that? Your, your situation is worse than feeding 5,000 hungry people? Just because you have a little bit of lack, you think you're in worse than that? I mean, no, that's a pretty big situation. Not many of us could say that. Since this worked for Jesus, it will work for us. This story was written for us to learn how the kingdom works, not to look how great and miracle Jesus is, which he is. He's our Lord and our Savior. But he's teaching us. Notice the disciples' mindset was still in the old earth curse system and not in the kingdom of God. They said to feed this many people, it would take eight months' wages. Everything I get is tied to labor. Jesus wants to show us how to get it without labor tied to it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it, no hard toil. Yes. Say, thank you, Lord. Verse 37, he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? So we can carry out this vision in the plans of God in the natural. We cannot, excuse me, we cannot carry out the vision and the plans of God in the natural. We need to learn how to operate in the kingdom like Jesus did. We have to tap into the Spirit of God to learn how it works. Jesus was instructed by the Holy Spirit on what to do to fix the problem. We have to learn how to tap into the Holy Spirit to fix the problem. Oh, but Pastor Robert, I don't pray in tongues. Well, and get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay, but I'm already baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, why aren't you using the resource God gave you? Well, I don't know how to interpret. Why don't you come and learn how? It's really easy. And when the Holy Spirit starts talking to you, you get your answers. In the days gone past, to take the Oregon Trail, it may take about a year to get here. Later, we could take a boat, but that would take about the same amount of time going around South America. Today, we can travel across the United States in about five to six hours. How many of you like to do the boat thing? Me, I want to get across and get back. Okay? So how many know the new system of flying is so much faster than the old way of travel and a little more luxurious and you get to eat a hot dinner and some things to drink? Okay? So what the church does, it keeps praying the old ways with no results. Instead of the new way in the kingdom of God. And I watched that last night as we went and visited that other church. It's amazing how people get stuck in the old way and won't change. We really need to get our minds renewed to the way the kingdom of God operates. How many want to get your minds renewed? The way God operates, my ways are not your ways. Oh, come on, we're going to get that way. Amen. So we need to listen to foolish thoughts. We need to listen to foolish thoughts. The Holy Spirit talks to you in things that, I want you to make a light bulb. What in the world's a light bulb? Oh, it's a miracle that it lights up the whole house. It was dark. That sounds foolish to me. Why don't you go catch a fish and pay my tax? How foolish does that sound? 
And you stop and realize, that is foolish thought, isn't it? Okay? So we have to learn to listen to those types of thoughts. The things of the Spirit are foolish. We need to be open to things that do not make sense. I'm talking to you about how the Holy Spirit talks to you. The Holy Spirit will talk to you and say, go start PDX Video Shopper. Uh, how do I go about doing that? And what will it do for me? Well, a year later, it's helping pay the rent. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for that foolish thought in Jesus' name. We need to be open to the things that do not make sense. Imagine, have the thought of an airplane and crossing the U.S. in the 1800s. Isn't that a foolish thought? The kingdom of God answer may sound foolish to you. You mean the earth is not flat? Come on. Five loaves and two fish. Is that really going to work? That sounds foolish. You got two fish, Nancy. You have five loaves of bread, and that's going to feed 5,000 people. How stupid is that? Come on, Jesus, get real. You've got to learn to get your mind renewed to the way the kingdom of God operates so you can have the multiplication. See, thank you, Lord. We really need to become comfortable with the Spirit teaching us things we do not know. Do you know everything? No. Then be a wise how the Holy Spirit starts teaching you things that you don't know will throw you for a loop. Now, there's a person in this church who says, well, if I don't know what to do, I'm not going to do anything at all, so I don't do nothing. How many of you know who that person is? Everybody point back to the person in the back and say, you know what? Get over that and start listening to the Holy Spirit teach you new things you don't know. Amen? Transformed means metamorphosis or to be changed. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's answer to your problem may not look like the answer. It's going to look different than what you expect. Just ask the Lord to show you step by step on what to do. Transforming your thinking to the way the Lord is thinking. Amen. However, because we have grown up in the world of darkness, we think it all depends on us and not the Lord. Start looking at the way the new kingdom operates. When you do all, when you do, then all things become possible. Notice that. When you start thinking the way God thinks, then all things really are possible. When our thinking is changed, then we find out how to do the things the Lord's way much faster than the slow way. How many of you would like to go around the horn on a boat that sometimes the power breaks? You're out there in the, in the surf drifting. They are called big giant ocean liners that don't work anymore. How many like to be on one of those? Or would you like to be on that fast Concorde and you're across the United States in a few hours? The fast way is a comparison teaching that the Holy Spirit will give you the fast way of getting answers in Jesus' name. Operating in the new covenant supersedes the old way of working in the earth curse system. Begin to think about who you are in Christ. Begin to think about the way the kingdom of God operates. Allow God to change the way you think. Say amen. amen. So I want to share with you the secrets of God for your life so you too can have the abundant life. I want to help you to tap into how, how the kingdom operates. How many are ready for this? Amen. Okay. Jesus speaks to a fig tree and the tree withers. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, and let's look at verse 12. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples 
heard it. What did we just learn? He's speaking. Okay? Jesus is telling us how the kingdom operates in these verses. He is showing us a kingdom law or a principle. Anyone can do this. Say anyone. Anyone can do this. Believe what you say. Believe in your heart and say with your mouth. We have the keys to the kingdom. Some think if our confession is right, it will work. Not so. It works when we believe in our heart and say. Most people have trouble with this because their mind thinks it believes, but the heart is in unbelief. I'm going to say that over because this is stopping. This is the area you ask, Holy Spirit, why didn't it work? Because your mind believes, but the heart is in unbelief. Most likely because they are inexperienced with the heart belief with the kingdom of God and they are working by what they see in the natural so their heart does not believe speaking the word of God is only part of the connection the real interface is believing with your heart the lady with the issue of blood said if I just touch the hem of his garment I will be healed she believed with her heart and her faith was released, which healed her. Now you can see why it's so important to have a renewed mind. So we can think the thoughts of God and get the results like the Bible says we can. By the keys of the kingdom that we possess, we change our situation. We are tapping into the kingdom of God and getting results. By faith and patience, we receive the promises of God. Amen. So, the demons recognized Jesus, but they never came out until he said for them to come out. Have you come to torment us? They're in that person. They never left until he told them to. Okay? He released his authority with his words. The law of the kingdom of God is set. It's not going to change. It will work for anyone in the new covenant. Electricity will work for anyone. I can put a battery into the thing and the battery is charged. It will work. An airplane will work for anyone. It is the law of lift. It is set. When we stop and think about it, God put everything in order and set his laws on the sixth day of creation. And here we are, 2012, 2013, I mean, and some of us have been walking with the Lord for a lot of years, and you're not even operating in the kingdom of God's laws that's set. And that's why I want this message to get into your heart. God knows everything. Everything. He knows where you are and what's happening in your life. Your answer is just one breath away from hearing God. Amen? The Holy Spirit gives us words of knowledge, gives us prophetic, gives us healing, gives us faith, gives us prophetic and healing and the gifts of healing. He gives us all the nine gifts. And he'll speak to your heart, and he'll give you the right answer. So the same principles that apply to healing, salvation, applies to finances. And here's the hang-up. I command your back to be healed. I speak to the sinuses to be healed. I command that problem to be healed, and they're healed. What's the problem with speaking to your debt to be healed, to be paid for, paid off in the name of Jesus? for money to come and be in your pocket, you haven't said it. That's why you don't have it. And because you did say it, you didn't believe that what you said is going to work, so you don't get it. 
It's a heart issue. And once you get your heart straightened out with the things of God and your mind renewed to how it operates, you're going to start finding out you can have the things you want in the name of Jesus. In Mark chapter 6 and verse 42, it says all the people were satisfied. We are all learning this. When we sow to God and follow after Him, satisfaction starts to happen. How many know that's good? However, let's talk about the double portion. There is no true rest without provision. The double portion is more than enough. And they did eat and were filled. They were satisfied. They were full. I want to be satisfied. You want to be satisfied. But satisfaction is wonderful, but I want more than enough. I don't want to be just satisfied with going out to dinner after church. I want to have dinner tomorrow night, and I want to have some lunch and some breakfast. I need more than just one dinner. Satisfaction. So i got to have a double portion. Say amen. The fragments are where the double portion comes from. How many baskets were left over? Twelve. How many baskets were left over? Seven. Those are the fragments, and that's where the double portion comes from. We need to start stepping into the double portion. I'm going to step into the double portion. The money we make is not about us, and this is the problem. I want to buy this, I want to buy this, I want this, I want this, I want this. All your wants will keep coming, and you're not spending any of it on the things of God. So it's not about us. We want to move out for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Our money is all about the kingdom of God. It's not about me. We need a vision that is much bigger than us. It takes more money than just being satisfied. We need to step into the 12 baskets or the double portion. The Holy Spirit had to tell the disciples there is more out there. Most people look at the fragments as, nah, it's just stuff. It's, you know, we'll just throw it away. The fragments are the double portion. Here is a law concerning the fragments. The fragments are hidden. Why are the fragments hidden? Why aren't they in plain sight? They're hidden so the devil doesn't get to it first. Amen. Right now, God has your provision hidden. I'm going to say it again. God has your provision hidden. He has your overflow hidden from the enemy. Say, praise the Lord. Pay close attention while you are praying in the Spirit. Stop. Time out. We pray in tongues up here after we sing. Are you, play, are you paying close attention to the Spirit of the Lord speaking to your heart, or are you just mumbling words and praying in tongues? Pay close attention while you're praying in the Spirit. This can be when the Holy Spirit is revealing to you the hidden fragments. Why do you want to pray in tongues? So the Holy Spirit can tell me where the double portion is. As you can see, why taking notes or recording your interpretation is so relevant to getting your double portion. Let the Holy Spirit organize your day. Catch that one back there. Let the Holy Spirit organize your day. Let Him show you things to come. When He shows you, move on it right away. Don't procrastinate. Or the devil will get it before you do. The devil is all about getting it before you do because he does not want God to get any glory. We want to give glory to God for taking care of us, don't we? Amen. So the overflow, the double portion, the fragments are hidden from you for you. Amen. See, thank you, Jesus. A treasure hidden in a field. Let's go look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field. Everybody say, what's a, what's a field? It's ground. What's a ground in Mark 4? Your heart. The which when the man had found, he hideth, and for joy thereof, right, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buys the field. Hmm. Do you, 
did anybody ever tell you about this? This is a kingdom thing. It's telling you how important it is that your heart be fertile ground. Amen. The parable in Mark 4, what is the ground referring to? It is your heart or your spirit. Where the kingdom of where is the kingdom of heaven? It's in your spirit. The kingdom of heaven's treasure is hidden in your spirit. This is called revelation. God reveals to you and he wants you to seize it right at that moment. Oh, thank you, God. I'll get that in the morning. I'm going to sleep now. You wake up in the morning. What did, it, what did God tell me? I, I can't remember because you didn't do anything. Most of us don't. And we've got to change the way we think. So how do we find these secrets that's hidden? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Are you guys getting this? Want me to say this again? Can I, can I change the scripture a little bit? I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man, the hidden Fragments, which God has prepared for them that love him. Does that make sense now? Yes, it does. But God, but God, everybody say, but God has revealed them unto us by his Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep thoughts of God. For what man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit knows what God knows, and when therefore he knows it's in your spirit, he can show you how to get it. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit, which is of God, that we might know, bells and whistles goes off, the things that are freely given to us of God, that we might know the thoughts that are freely given to us of God. God wants to show you in your heart what he has prepared for you, the hidden wisdom, the hidden fragments, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The Holy Spirit starts showing you things, and you go, oh, okay, let me investigate that. Let me scrutinize this. Let me just get this together. Oh, I get it. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Wisdom is for our glory. Our spirit knows what God has given to us. Now, you can make right decisions all the time. All we need is the mind of Christ. I've got the mind of Christ. With this, there's no more wasted time or wrong decisions because I hear God's voice. How do I get these mysteries in my spirit? In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He speaks mysteries. Mysteries get in your spirit by praying in the spirit. And the mysteries are going to be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit with your interpretation. So we groan in the spirit. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. What is the likewise therefore? Because likewise of the scriptures ahead of that talks about groaning and having a childbirth. Like that, we are to groan in our spirit. Also, the Holy Spirit helps us of our dullness of perception. For we know not what we should pray 
for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit wants to give you answers. And you praying in a tongue sounds like you're groaning. We groan in the Spirit. We are operating in the Spirit. This is where we get the knowledge about the fragments. How will I know about things that are not in the Bible? Praying in the Spirit is the answer. We need to get comfortable praying in the Spirit on a regular basis to hear Him. The Holy Spirit will show you how to become prosperous. He will show you where your fragments are hidden. He will lead your life into abundance. Walking in the Spirit lets you know that you are in assignment and provision is waiting for you. And this is to be continued next week. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the blessing of the Holy Spirit that's on us. We thank you, Lord, that we have the mind of Christ and we get to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. We're the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for loving us and giving us revelation knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the word so we can get the fragments and live in that double portion in the rest of God. All the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did, amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know, so give us a call at 503 652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partner. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at rider.org. That's rider.org. And join us again next time for more of Rider Ministries with Pastor Robert Ryder.